So all this is important for understanding where nativism comes from. It's not just a bunch of kooks. It's not just a bunch of strange, uh, you know, fanatics. Um, it's, nativism is an expression of very deeply rooted class and cultural impulses in the native-born uh, Protestant uh, uh, population. Um, it reflects labor competition, problems of wage decline, um, as I say, economic competition, and cultural conflict. Now, here's another thing that it's hard to remember right now. Anti-Catholicism, I consider this a tremendous, a, a tremendous form of progress for American society. Anti-Catholicism was a deeply, deeply rooted prejudice in American history. It was there at the very beginning. It was a commonly said among the leaders of the Revolution that the American Revolution was the natural outgrowth of the Protestant Reformation. The notion of the Pope as the Antichrist, but not only religiously, but anti-democratic. The church is a hierarchy where people are told what to do and how can they possibly be democratic citizens if they can't uh, think for themselves. Um, this is, you know, America is born of the, uh, in the wars between Protestant England and Catholic France out of, out of, the, out of the Seven Years' War, etc. cetera. Um, and um, hatred of Rome is the one thing on which all the different Protestant denominations could agree in this country, dislike of Catholicism and the Catholic Church. Um, and why do I consider this progress? Today, that prejudice barely exists, if at all. But I'm old enough to remember when, President, when John F. Kennedy ran for president in 1960, you would be amazed, if you go back to study that campaign, at the vicious public anti-Catholicism that was just spread in that, you know, all over the place in that campaign. Uh, that he's going to be the agent of the Pope in the United States, he, the a Catholic can't do what he wants, he has to do what he's told, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Kennedy's election seemed to really be a major blow against anti-Catholic sentiment. And in fact, the second, who was the second major party candidate for president? Kerry, Kerry right, John Kerry in 2004. Now when Kerry ran, nobody, they, nobody actually bothered with the fact that he was Catholic. They, they thought he was French. They denounced him as being French because he spoke French. <laughs> And that, it does, that eliminates you as a president of the United States if you know more than one language. But um, <laughs> nobody complained that he was ca a Catholic running for office. So that, this is an example of how deeply, deeply rooted prejudice can actually be alleviated. And so progress is possible in history. But the um, nativism is an expression of this native-born Protestant desire. It's not only to exclude people, but more the demand that they assimilate into what is said to be the mainstream American politics. This is the notion of the melting pot, not cultural pluralism, not diversity. If you want to be an American, you've got to give up your old world traditions, of which Catholicism is supposedly one, and merge into the mainstream American society, accepting its dominant values. The New York Times wrote around this time, there is one duty we would earnestly urge upon the plain good sense of our adopted citizens. It is the duty of Americanizing themselves. They should not herd themselves together for the preservation of the customs, habits, and languages of the countries they came from. In other words, spread out, assimilate, Stop being whatever you were in the old world, and then you, will, you can be accepted. Now, um, whether Catholics could do that is an interesting question. So here is a cartoon of the Pope arriving in America. This is the Pope with some kind of banner with a couple of other priests or bishops behind him. He's like invading the United States. Here's a good, upstanding, young American fellow and he has in his hand the Holy Bible, the Protestant Bible, and he's sort of using it to kind of repel the Pope. <laughs> and here is uh, a kind of what was called Brother John. Uh, uh, this is a kind of a symbol of America before the kind of bearded Uncle Sam standing and watching the whole thing. But this is a typical image of the Catholic Church trying to 
you know, kind of take over uh, the United States. This is Pope Pius IX, who arrives addressing young America, who holds a Bible. The Pope says, I have come to take charge of your spiritual welfare. And the bishop, looking at the boy with the Bible, says, I cannot bear to see that boy with that horrible book. <laughs> so this is your image of the danger of the, uh, of the Catholic Church. And in a way, you can see this since the terrible events of September 11th, there's been a whole revival of this notion of a religious definition. Can Muslims be Americans? Very popular after that became the book by the political scientist Samuel P. Huntington called The Clash of Civilizations. What's going on is not just political power or ideological fight, but it's civilizations. There is American civilization and there is something called Islamic civilization. The notion of Islamic civilization is an absurd, you know, ahistorical idea. Islam, there are over a billion Muslims in the world living in societies ranging from Indonesia into parts of uh, Latin America, and those countries have nothing in common with each other, really. So the idea that there's a single thing called Islamic civilization is ridiculous. But the notion that somehow Muslims are not capable of being good American citizens was widely circulated in the aftermath of 9-11, and it, it, the language bore, if, if anyone knew about history, they would see the language bore tremendous similarity to the language against Catholics in the uh, 1850s. And there was a whole literature of nativism exposing the church and its designs. Um, uh, and, and, um, and, and some of it was a rather pornographic literature about what was going on in these nunneries. Um, and, um, you know, there were all sorts of exposures of various uh, nefarious deeds, uh, so to speak. And the connection of the Irish immigrants with the political boss who is getting them to the polls, and then the priest who supposedly is telling them what to do, uh, it just reinforces this idea that they're a danger to American uh, democracy. Um, so immigrants are blamed, as I just to, su to finally summarize for a second, immigrants are blamed for class problems for um, uh, not assimilating, for rising crime and pauperism, uh, for uh, corruption of the political process.